Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here and welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of October 2023. Gonna be kind of a weird one because there's stuff that is not uh, here at the moment that's off camera and then I'm gonna have to plug it into the footage later and whatever, it'll make more sense when we get there. But for the moment, this is everything I have on hand. So, well, there's actually one thing off camera, but uh, you'll get to it eventually. I'm kind of saving that for last. Anywho, uh, yeah, so if you guys could do me a favor before we talk about all the video game pickups, if you could like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you've never done that before, and check out all my social media stuff in the description. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, uh, Patreon, appreciate that one, Spreadshirt, as well as my travel channel. The travel channel, in this case, I'm really going to plug on this because I went to Portland Retro Game Expo, which I will argue is the best retro video game convention that exists anywhere on this planet, and there's going to be an entire video all about it, uh, about all the adventures we had. I was a guest there, so they flew me out, and I met up with a lot of cool familiars I'm sure you guys are going to know from YouTube uh, as well as I also got to do a lot of cool things like I had panels I brought the Sega Pluto out there as part of one museum I was helping to manage the Atari Jaguar Museum which contained the Atari Jaguar dental unit all set up and ready to go so you could actually get your teeth like pictures taken um, I also uh, helped to host the official Blockbuster World Championship for games, um, which was insane. Uh, so it, it was—it's a whole big crazy adventure. Hopefully, you guys will check out that video on that channel. Links in the description. Now. Uh, yeah, so this video will contain a lot of pickups, but technically ones in some cases that you've seen before, but there's like a PS to it, and that's part of the whole thing. We'll actually start with that. That would be this, first of all. The original Xbox. Now, it just looks like an Xbox, right? Well, here's the thing. I made a video on this two years ago. Um, it contains a board known as the HD+, Plus, or did, um, and I did a video on that board. The, the, the board was great. I had no problems with that, but I decided once that was over that I wanted to, like, upgrade the rest of the system, because there's a ton of things you you can do to an original Xbox and trust me when I say we'll make a video about the ultimate Xbox at some point uh, but basically this one I gave it to my buddy Jesse and he did some stuff like upgrading the RAM and all sort of thing but he was running into a bunch of problems with that and eventually I finally got it back at PRGE but it was having video output problems ironically after all that so I didn't know what to do about that so I contacted this guy Dustin who makes the HD plus turns out he lives in Atlanta and he was like hey you know you can send me the system and I'll, I'll clean it all up and make some changes to it and I was like tell you what I have a whole bunch of United gift cards and stuff let me just come down to Atlanta if it's easy I'll hang with my buddy Dave and we'll just work on it he was like yeah sure so I went down to Atlanta and I brought this with me Okay, and when I get there, he was like, I will put in my new board. It's called Stellar. I'm sure a lot of you guys in the Xbox community have heard of it. Stellar HD Plus. And like, yeah, we'll do a whole video on all this. I'm just setting this up as like this console has had quite the journey. <laughs> but now uh, it has a currently it has a two terabyte SSD in it. It has 128 megabytes of RAM. It has the Stellar um, HD Plus boards. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I've been waiting for it for so long. But yes, again, it will get its own uh, video. There's the box for the HD+. Plus. Uh, also, he gave me a keychain, which is just kind of nice. But yeah, it's all good. Um, so in addition to that, PRGE. I got a couple of badges. I was both an exhibitor and a, a VIP. Uh, Tim Kitzrow, by the way, who's a uh, voice of NBA Jam from downtown. That guy, he's a buddy of mine. He just randomly pulled me aside. He's like, I need to sign your badge. And he just did. So that's Tim Kitzrow's autograph. Um, but in addition to that, as I mentioned, we had the Atari Jaguar Museum all set up. So we took some photos. Really bad photo of me, but it's not really designed for that. It's designed for your teeth, which there's a photo of my teeth. There you go. You didn't need to see that, but there it is anyway. And uh, at my panel, we had a nice little like uh, card thing with my name on it. So that was cool. The panel went really well, by the way. Um, forget all that. Let's talk about actual pickups. That's what you guys want to see. So this is a bunch of new stuff. Now, obviously, because of this, I was kind of Xbox inspired. So we have a bunch of stuff here. Um, if you're unaware, uh, the original Xbox was a system I quite enjoy and I really like collecting for. I've kind of gotten a little lazier with it, admittedly, but I want a full set of it, which is about a thousand games worldwide. I have all the European exclusives, which is like 88 games or so. I have all the Australian ones, which is like four. I have all the Japanese ones, which is like 48 titles. Then there's one South Korean title and one Taiwanese title. I have both of those. It's really just the American stuff I'm kind of slacking on. So I cut into it a little bit, nothing substantial, but I got some stuff. Um, Auto Modelista, at least I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, Crash Nitro Kart, this one kind of is interesting because Vivendi Universal made this, so they don't really exist anymore, I mean Universal Studios does. But Activision now owns that Crash Bandicoot, and Activision is now owned by Microsoft. So this is one of those games where 
Maybe if Microsoft revisits the backwards compatibility program, this one could theoretically be added, but I don't really know. Again, because Vivendi Universal is not active, whatever. Um, flat out. Pure Pinball. American Pinball Reborn. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then, of course, you know, probably shouldn't have left off with this one. Madden 06, just hand egg. I, don't know, I hate hand egg, but, you know, for the set. Um, then we got a couple of other ones that were unrelated to that. So there's a guy uh, I see at PRGE who lives out in Seattle, but he went down to Portland. He's in my Discord, which, by the way, you should join my Discord. A lot of fun in there. Um, big community. It was a huge meetup of the Discord members in, at PRGE. There's a guy in there named Sega Steve, or Sega Stevern, sometimes people call him. Uh, super nice guy, and when I saw him, he just handed me some stuff. This is what he handed me. A couple of Xbox demo discs. But these are actually uh, from, I think, the UK magazine. Yeah, official Xbox UK magazine. So their demo disc didn't come in, like, little sleeves. They got them in these, like, full disc cases. This is issue number one and issue number two. I have no idea how many issues of this there was. I didn't know anything about this being a thing. I mean, I think that's really very neat. Um, obviously, I would ask someone British, hey, what do you guys know about this? I'm very curious. But, yeah. Yeah, from uh, March 2002 and April 2002. So very cool. That's a one of those things where like it's just a bonus I can throw in my my collection. And speaking of that, that would be this. Um, so this was actually sold by a guy named NT Games. He's a Brazilian dude. I've actually been on some of his stuff on his channel. Um, and uh, so he had a whole bunch of cool Brazilian things. But one thing that was in there that wasn't Brazilian was this. Um, this is a, basically Microsoft made this during the original Xbox's run. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with like the DVD playback kit that the original Xbox had. This was a very similar idea, except the idea was to link it to your PC. So it has a remote and it was compatible with um, Windows XP specifically. And the whole point was to have Xbox Media Center or Windows Media Center more specifically function with your original Xbox stock. This didn't require mods and all that, which obviously this thing's all hacked up and doesn't need. This is totally pointless now. It's just a novelty of the fact that it even exists. Um, it does have its own proprietary software. There's actually two discs inside this. One is specifically for your PC and one is specifically for the Xbox as like a launcher. Um, like I said, totally useless now, but it was just a really cool thing and he cut me a good deal on it just because it's a bizarre thing you never see. So as someone who's like obviously trying to collect a bunch of original Xbox stuff, I just thought that was neat. Um, so after that, we have a Dreamcast. Doesn't seem like a big deal. Let's move on. No, actually, this is kind of special. Though this is probably going to get its own video as well of rare variants, actually. So that guy, Sega Stevern, as we were just talking about, uh, he had been telling me there's something I want to give you when I see you. And at first I thought he meant these, but no, he actually meant this. This is a Dreamcast, obviously, but this is actually a special one. You'll notice on the front of it, it has a plate. Um, that actually says special model, and then it says some somebody's initials, and then it says K Konoshi Konishi. Um, so the deal with this is this is what is known as a partner's edition Dreamcast. Uh, the long story short of this is that before the Dreamcast came out in Japan, Sega did this pre-order system, and they did between 100 to 500 of these. And I honestly can't narrow that down just yet. I'm gonna have to do a little more homework on that. But the basic idea was if you pre-order it, you can have a special plate on there that's got your name on it. So Kei Konishi is the original owner of this system. Uh, and that's what makes these special is these plates. The signature is always the same, but the name on the bottom is always different. And yeah, so uh, he was just gonna give this to me for free, but I was like, that's a pretty rare variant of the system. Uh, do you want any money for it? And he was like, how about 40 bucks? Which is beyond reasonable. Like, that's basically still giving it away. So I paid him 40 bucks. I was very happy to do that. So thank you to Sega Stevern for adding to my Dreamcast collection. And in this case, a very, very unique item that I've always kind of wanted. So um, next up, we have a package. Uh, this comes from, uh, well, one up games. Uh, they do like, they sell like cleaning products and stuff. They just kind of sent this to me as like a random thing. I'm sure you guys have seen them. Cause, uh, if you're familiar with John Riggs, I know that like his business card was printed on their stuff. This is just kind of a, according to them, they're just kind of thanking me for videos. So I'm thanking them by just throwing a bunch of stuff in there. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, there's more than I was expecting. This is actually huge. Uh, let's see. We got a whole bunch of random things here. Okay, wow, there's a lot more to this than I was expecting. 
so they sell cartridge cleaning kits. So for example, this is an original Game Boy cartridge cleaner. So you would basically take uh, cleaning fluid, put it in, in the cartridge, and then just kind of go up and down with it like that. There's also these little mini cartridge ones, or I'm not sure exactly like which system specifically they would recommend it for, but basically whenever you can get access to the pins, you can put that on there. Um, something called a toilet timer. I think this was just sent as a bonus. Rotate clockwise, one full rotation. Get off the pot. I don't know what this is. This is just some... What is this? Runs for approximately five minutes. I guess this is just to make sure you don't stay in the toilet for more than five minutes. I don't know what this is. That was not... I don't know. Um, there's a little mini cartridge for the... It looks like it's the N64 memory card. And guess in case you want to clean the contacts of the back of an N64 cartridge. I wasn't expecting all this, to tell you the truth. Um, this is an Atari 2600-7800 slash cartridge cleaning kit. Same idea. Uh, Super Nintendo as well. Uh, NES. Sega Master System. Sega Genesis slash Sega Mega Drive. Uh, Famicom specifically, N64, Super Famicom, uh, there's some sort of envelope here, let's open this up real quick, because I don't know what this is, uh, oh, it's just additional, oh, wow, these are new, they made, they made me the business cards, sort of, these are little kits that, uh, basically just have my face on them, this is a cartoon face that re-res Shane, uh, from, the, you guys probably know him, his his group uh, his his other Adam the Adam on his channel actually drew this up for me years ago and these guys just put it on a little card that's very very cute thank you um, but the big thing that was actually like what this is originally I guess what they were excited about and it's kind of funny because I did a video not that long ago where I was talking about how Atari is kind of making like weird moves and it's almost like Atari's coming back and or at least that is this vibe um, that's actually part of this uh, that's it's symbolic. Uh, of that. This is the Atari 2600 cartridge kit. Now, while you did actually see an Atari 2600 uh, cartridge in here, this is only useful for cleaning the console. That's what these are for, is for cleaning the console. These, like, boards are for cleaning cartridges, right? Um, the thing with the Atari 2600 is uniquely amongst you know, game cartridges, if you ever look at the bottom of a cartridge, like a Genesis cartridge or whatever, you'll notice the pins are always exposed. And so it's very easy to get to those contacts and just clean them up. Uh, there's one system that's an exception, which is the Atari 2600. You actually can't. Atari had designed these like little plastic, like uh, this plastic mechanism that basically blocks access to it and only releases when the springs are hit. And they're only hit when you put the uh, cartridge in a system. And then like that's how it makes contact with the cartridges, uh, the contact ports. Um, so these guys basically designed this thing where you can just plug this in to an Atari 2600 cartridge, and then the bottom leaves exposure there in space so you can actually clean the contacts of an Atari 2600 cartridge. And I think that's very unique. So, you know, shout out to them, 1UP card. As I said 1UP games before, I apologize, it's 1UP card. Um, I appreciate that, I was not expecting that. Um, that's, seriously, I thought I would, they were just sending this in like a really big box. I didn't realize they were sending like all this stuff. So yeah, my cartridges uh, and my consoles will be very clean thanks to you. And I really was not expecting to have my face kind of plastered on them. They only gave me three though, so I don't, I don't, know, I don't know who the lucky recipients are going to be. I don't think anybody would really want them, but hey. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to, uh, you know, there's, there's more stuff to come, but it requires a little bit of movie magic. Movie magic, you're getting enticed. Ooh, ooh, ah. Ooh, 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 movie magic, movie magic, movie magic. All right, so apologies for that. Um, so here's basically what happened. You see a couple of consoles here that you have actually seen before in previous pickups videos, but there's a reason that they're here. Uh, obviously in the past I've shown you this uh, PC Engine Super Graphics, even did a dedicated video on it. Uh, this, there's nothing really new to say except for what's related to it. In a video not, well, it was kind of a while ago actually to be honest with you, this is a Super CD-ROM 2. This is an attachment that allows for the PC Engine, it's, it's a PC Engine CD. Um, but it was unique in that it not only was the shape, you know, bizarre, but what was cool about it is this one actually is compatible with the Super Graphics. It's the only one that is natively compatible with it that doesn't require any sort of like, there's this like weird cable that allows you to connect a PC Engine CD to the Super Graphics and everything. This was the only model that allowed it to do natively. 
Now, when I got it, I actually didn't know that. That was just kind of a bonus that happened later. But basically, the reason we're bringing this up is my buddy Chris, who lives down in Indiana, uh, I handed this over to him and I said, work on this thing, repair it, do whatever you gotta do. It did work, but he said, yeah, it was really bad inside, new capacitors, he changed a bunch of stuff. He also did an RGB mod to it, which he had actually done a mod to the uh, Super Graphics, so you can get RGB out of both. One thing I didn't know, but he basically built this for me, so there is a power supply for this thing, which I do have. And if you have a link cable, you can actually power both the Super Graphics and the Super CD-ROM at the same time with one power supply. Uh, but you need a link cable and that original link cable is hard to find. Well, Chris being the guy that he is, he was able to build one himself. So this is a little adapter uh, with this pin head right here. It'll allow it to work on here. And if you remove it, it'll actually work on like a standard uh, PC engine, like core graphics or whatever. So you can just use one power supply, which is nice. But yeah, basically I'm just showing you an example of the work that he did. And huge shout out to him. I'll put an email uh, if in the description if you want to contact him and have him work on anything. But yeah, he said under the hood, there wasn't really anything that that crazy about this. He just, you know, changed the laser out so it's more reliable. He did say that it reads burn games better than original games, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I replaced the capacitors. This thing's working great. The other one he worked on for me, though, is the Sega Mega Jet. Now, I haven't done a full video on this yet. I will at some point. I did include this in as a previous episode of Playload. Um, and if you didn't, if you missed that video and you have no idea what this is, this is a portable version of the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, only released in Japan, specifically for airlines. Uh, Japan Airlines, I believe. Uh, that didn't go too well, and Sega ended up putting the rest of the units essentially with a slightly modified power supply so that it wasn't proprietarily locked to an uh, airline uh, in stores and just kind of, you know, burned off the inventory. It did not do well. It's a rather rare but official version of the Sega Genesis that is a portable version that has no screen. And the whole idea is that you connect it to a television and kids can play it on the flight or more accurately when you get home. You have the controller and the console kind of all built into one thing. Now I showed this video and a huge shout out to a guy named Blue Fates in my Discord because he was the one who actually found this in Saskatoon, Canada in the box. Um, but we bought it more or less untested. Now, when I got it, it did actually work. Like, it would play games, but the video output on this thing was horrendous. I tried it with composite, which was what it came with, which I knew would look bad, but it did work. And then I decided to test it with some RGB capabilities, which also worked and looked better, but still looked really bad. And I figured the capacitors in this thing are probably, you know, dead. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Chris, see what he can do with it. And he was like, well, you were half right. The capacitors in this thing were junk, so I did replace those, and that made the video quality a lot better. But he said something else that was bizarre about it was like an extra modification that had been done to it. So I don't know if anybody remembers this. When I got the Mega Jet in the box, there was a European power supply. There was also a standard Japanese one, but for no reason there was a European one in there. No reason. Um, now, that being said, the Mega Drive did not come with a European power supply. It should not have had one. So when he opened this up, he saw this like extra modification done to the system. And upon decoding it, he realized that somebody clearly in Europe had one time owned this thing and had done a modification to try and essentially get PAL video output out of it. And that was causing all the problems. So as soon as he removed that, the video quality as well as fixing the capacitors, perfect. He said it's a beautiful video signal now. So yeah, basically just a repair job, but I wanted you guys to see that there was a follow-up story to the Mega Drive. It's in beautiful condition, now works absolutely flawlessly. Huge shout out to Chris for making that possible. So with that said, with these items all done, let's move on. Ooh, movie magic, movie magic, movie magic, movie magic. Oh, ah, ah, movie magic. Okay, we're back. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, apologies for how that had to be done. It's just whatever. Anyway, so you can see there's a special one last thing on this table, and this is by far the coolest thing and the most bizarre and technically pointless thing, but we did it all the same. So earlier in the video, I mentioned a buddy of mine named NT Games. He's a Brazilian dude who I said, you know, he sold me that Xbox Media Center thing. He also sold me something right at the beginning of the show that I had wanted forever and I couldn't believe he had. Um, this is the Master System Super Compact. Master System Super Compact. Now, if you don't know what this is, and I would not blame you, uh, there is a long story to this, but basically, this is going to be its own video at some point. Rare variants will get this as well. But here's the long and the short of it. Because of Brazilian tax laws is a whole big complicated thing. The Sega Master System is actually still technically active in Brazil. Like new models of it come out. New titles are supported. Like Sega is still on board with it. It's, it's weird. Because of them, it's the longest running console in history. It is stupid popular still. But it was obviously more popular you know, years ago. 
Because of that, Sega actually went ahead and made a whole bunch of unique hardware down there that never came out here. Now, most of this stuff is done by a company called Tectoy, and this was actually had their involvement. But this one's a little more unique because Sega had more of a direct hand in it. Um, the Master System Super Compact is a portable version of the Sega Master System that has no screen, similar to the Mega Jet, which we just showed you a moment ago. Uh, same basic idea, but designed specifically for the Brazilian market. Um, now, what's bizarre about this thing is it totally works. Uh, it's, it runs on batteries. It also can run through power. It only has RF output, and it's actually designed for wireless RF, which is... I mean, I don't know if you could come up with a more... Uh, this, like, terrible-looking signal. Oh, wait. Yeah, I can. It's PAL. PAL RF. Um, now, technically, you can actually run it with a coaxial cable. There's ways to make it work and all that. But I really just wanted it for the bizarreness, the fact that this is an officially created piece of Sega hardware, basically limited to one country, uh, which is just awesome. Um, so, yeah, he cut me an amazing deal on it because he's a fan of the channel, which he didn't have to do that. He, he offered it on his own. I just I just paid him. Um, but, yeah, I'm very happy with this. So, yeah, huge shout-out to NT Games. You did not have to do that. It also came with the box, which I actually just have folded up there just for the sake of it. came with manual Sonic the Hedgehog 1. One is built into it and yeah it's all in portuguese because you know brazilian but yeah this was my uh best pickup of the show like just because i was so happy to actually have this really obscure piece of sega hardware now when i said it was useless effectively like i said pal rf wireless i'm, I'm never you know <laughs> like that's not the way to play the sega master system but it, as far as like collector's items and just cool things to have this very near and dear to my heart. So huge shout out to NT Games. Check him out. I'll put a link in the description to his uh, Instagram. Um, but yeah, that's, that will do it uh, for this episode of Playload. So I want to give a huge shout out to him. Huge shout out to my buddy Chris for working on that other stuff. Huge shout out to Dustin for working on that Xbox for me, as well as uh, uh, 1UP Card for that big package of stuff. I really was not expecting all that. So And, and to Sega Steve for hooking me up with some great stuff too. And everybody who came out to PRGE and celebrated and just enjoys retro games and wants to continue to do so as a reminder again there will be an entire video about that adventure to prge on my travel channel please go to the links in the description check that out as well as liking this video commenting down below subscribing if you've never done that before and then all the social media stuff twitter instagram facebook discord patreon spreadshirt and of course the travel channel i appreciate the support on all those things thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all later